there is tremendous power in entrepreneurship, but we have to unleash it. I tell my students, you can develop the winning number of a lottery. You can develop the winning number of a lottery. That's a lot of a promise, and I'm a cautious person. So, what do we have to do to use this power of entrepreneurship? First of all, when we talk about entrepreneurship, what comes to mind first? That's capital. You need capital. So, it's a problem. Next is, you know, there are many ideas, but it, it's execution that matters. So, do we know much about business administration? Are we good, good administrators? Most of us, me included, have difficulties to organize their own life. So, how to organize a big organization? So, no capital, not much knowledge in business administration. Yeah, can say chapter closed. Do we have a patent? No. Do we are, very, are we doing very good in high tech? Are we close to a research institution? Most of us, no. So, chapter closed. We can say it's not available, it's not accessible to us. And I think that's wrong. That's wrong. And I want to show that we don't need much capital. We don't need much knowledge of business administration. That is totally in contrast to what everybody else says about entrepreneurship. I'm very well aware of that. And usually we don't have a patent. And I say we don't need a patent, but what we need is our brains. And we have to work hard with our brains. So there is a lot of problems in the world which I do not need to tell in detail. And what we need is many more people to use their brains to help solve these problems. Climate change is such one of them. So, when I talk about entrepreneurship, I talk about innovative entrepreneurship, not setting up a new shop or doing something for self-employment, but we talk about innovative entrepreneurship, following uh, Josef Schumpeter, an Austrian economist, who has put that first, that innovation is of utmost importance. So, how to create disruptive ideas that sounds simple but certainly is not so I give you an example take tea I'm more a coffee drinker but let's take tea so you easily can find out if you go to a tea garden and ask for the price and you compare the price with in Germany or in our expensive countries um, with the same tea in a tea shop you find out it's about 10 times more expensive and that's not only true for tea, that's true for many products. So what makes tea so expensive? If you do a bit of research, and you have to do that. You have to do that. You have to go, in, go into that field. Even if you don't have a professional background for that. I did, did not have any professional background for tea. You find out that the reason is that there is a, what you can call a convention. There are tea shops, tea usually sold in tea shops, and these tea shops have a huge variety of teas. And the more variety they have, the better they are regarded. And it said customers expect that variety. They do not want to drink the same tea all the time. And tea offers a huge variety all over the world. So if you follow that convention, tea is expensive because you have small amounts only. A good tea shop has about 300 different varieties. If you want to shop more, if you want to storage more of that, of one variety, you have to go to the wholesaler, and the wholesaler has the same problem with a huge variety. There's an importer, and then there's an exporter, and the exporter buys in the auction, and the auction gets the tea from the tea garden. So you find out it's the middleman. And if you really go into research, and you need not do any studying to do that research, my ears are, my ears are not big enough for that. <laughs> but you need the brain, not so much the ears. So, there's a second thing, that is uh, tea, again, conventionally, is sold in small packets. So why is it sold in small packets? One day with my coffee, I, when I 
held the coffee package in my hand, it's 500 grams. So, so why? Coffee is easily losing the flavor. Tea is not. For tea, you can take it for quite three years. So why is tea put in small packets and coffee in big packets? There's no reason for that. It's just convention. So if you break with these two conventions, big variety of teas and uh, small packages, you will see that you can have a lot better cost structure. Your costs suddenly disappear. You can buy the tea if you stick to one variety only but from the tea garden. Of course, you have to buy in bulk. You have to buy a big amount of tea. But if you stick to one variety, just the contrast to what the tea shop has, you save all the middlemen. You cut out the middlemen. And the same with the packaging. Why put it in small packets? Why not if coffee is in 500 grams? So put tea in 1 kg packages. So you have one variety of tea only. You have big packages only. Probably if people ask you, you frankly have to say, I'm a professor. Um, and I'm more a coffee drinker than tea. I have no professional background in tea, but I believe it makes sense. So, First thing is, don't talk too much with other people about that. It will discourage you. Or if you go to a bank, it will be very discouraging for you. Don't do that. Stick with the problem. Stick with the idea. Is it making sense? And if you can have the tea much cheaper by just buying in bulk than variety, make use of it. Change the price of the tea. Change the structure of the tea trade. Say, I make use of my cost structure and I offer the tea for a margin for me, but at a very tremendously different price. So when, yeah, the story is just, that was what I did 25 years ago. And nobody believed in that. I was the only one. So you have to do it. You have to find out, does it make sense for the customers? If you can offer the tea for one-third of the price, will it work or not? Of course it will work. But you have to choose not just any tea. You have to, make, you have to take advantage that you save on the uh, purchasing price. So you need not buy a cheap tea. You can buy an expensive tea. You can buy a very expensive tea. So next, what comes to mind? And you see, you have to shift the idea back and forth. You have to mull on it. If you say, I take the number one tea, Da Chiling province with high, very high altitude and so on. So I take the number one tea, particularly for comparison, because nobody believes that the professor provides a, a particular tea. But if I take the number one tea in the world, and that is Da Chiling, first flush, FTG, FOP1. So, if you choose that variety, you can have all kinds of comparisons and people understand that it's something extraordinary. That's the story. And again, I was not a good organizer, not at all. No professional background in the tea business. Within a few years, we were the number one in the trade. It's not Lipton's, it's not Book Bonds, it's not Twining's. According to the statistics of the Indian Tea Board, we are the number one in the world for the importation of Dutch shilling tea. So, what is the point? The point is that you have an idea that you work on and you really work hard on that idea. It's not about capital. We ask customers to pay in advance. So we could have even started a bank in the beginning. So there was no need of capital, no need to go to the banks and explain it an extraordinary idea. So what is next is to manage. So how to manage? I'm not a good manager. Ingvar Kamprad, who has created a, a very excellent furniture chain, IKEA, he said, I'm a catastrophical uh, uh, organizer. If you look into management, you see there's a lot of things. These are just the headlines, the general headlines. If you go more in details, now just take a German textbook about that, you have a lot of things that you have to, that you have to do, quite a lot of things. So it's again headlines, not the general headlines anymore, but headlines. So if you go into management and you follow the tradition of its execution, it's not ideas, it's execution, you have to 
counter with this problem, quite a lot, becoming more. I could continue with that quite some time. So don't go into management. You are lost. Don't go into management. Stick. This doesn't stick well. Stick with your own idea. It's okay. Stick with your own idea and work on it. Work hard on your idea. Give the management to somebody else. Give it to somebody else. There are a lot of masters of business administration that can do it. That is one thing. Don't go under in management. You have to need your brains to improve your business model once you start it. And there's the second thing that I would like to show. Now, this doesn't work anymore. <laughs> you can use components. Instead of going into the details of management, you can use components. The idea of that is, if you have fruit juice, usually the producer adds a concentrate to water. You find that if you look at the bottle, it's always concentrate with water, mostly. So what you can do is do it yourself. Take the concentrate home, or as an entrepreneur, sell the concentrate, not the fruit juice, and let the people add water at home. Tap water is about 300 times more efficient than this water that you take and buy in the shop. So do we, they, do we do the concentrate ourselves? Of course not. I have no idea how to do the concentrate. Oh, sorry. So what about... Somehow we have problems. Yes, so we don't do the concentrate ourselves. We use that as a component. We don't do the packaging ourselves. I had no idea how to do packaging that it's not infected with something. So we don't do that ourselves. We use a component. We don't do the office ourselves. We have no own office. We use a company that's one of my students. He has also a company here in Chiang Mai, uh, Holger Jonsons, and uh, we use that company, no own office. And what about uh, accounting? We use another company that is doing the accounting for us. And what about logistics? Do we do the parceling and, and sending out? No, we don't do that. So you can put the question, what is the general manager? It's my assistant, Raphael. What is he doing? And not so much. He says, OK, you have to coordinate the components. And that takes about maybe half an hour a day. That's important because it means we have our brains free for thinking about how to get attention to that idea, how to get to the media, what kind of products, uh, products other than Apple choose to do and so on. So we stick with entrepreneurship, we stick with innovative entrepreneurship, we do not go under in business administration and use components. So it has a number of excellent advantages, that is almost no initial investment because you use components that exist already. You have almost no fixed costs. Why do people go bankrupt? Because they invest it and there are a little flow of customers only. It takes too long time to really make your business well known and get customers. So in the meantime, you have liquidity problems and you go into bankruptcy. And you have a lot of extremely uh, good advantages. You are professional from the beginning. Be not because you are professional, I'm not an expert in food shoes, but because your components are professional and you choose, of course, from professional components. You are highly efficient. Usually you have to start small and wait until you grow <coughs> and get into some kind of economies of scale. No, you start highly efficient, not because you are efficient, because, but because your components are efficient. And you are virtual, you have a problem when a journalist comes and says, I want to make an interview in your company. We say, oh, we have a problem, where is the company? You can come to my kitchen or you can meet in a coffee shop. But there is no company. Company is in our brains. And you are global from the beginning. And virtual, which has some advantages, as you know. So that is the point. Take a different view of the world. Don't follow the conventions. Don't follow the conventions. Be curious and free yourself of what people believe is the standard or is a must or anything. You have to work through the conventions and that's hard work. You need to have your brains. So I think 
having said that, that there is a chance for all of us. Everybody can do that, what we have done. You need the ideas, and not just setting up a shop and sell something, but to work hard on the ideas, mull it, sho sh shovel the parts around, move it around until the puzzle, I'd like to compare it with the puzzle, until the puzzle fits, and that takes time. It took me quite some time to develop T-Campaign and develop this idea that I use for showing the components. So I strongly believe it's the first time in history that almost everybody can become an entrepreneur and a quite powerful entrepreneur. It's not the small size that is the problem, but the small size is a big advantage. So become an entrepreneur, dare to be different, that's the point, dare to be different and work hard on your business concept and become an entrepreneur. There are no better choices than that. Thank you.